We're on the verge of witnessing another solar spectacle, the upcoming solar maximum and the reversal of the sun's magnetic field. As the sun approaches the most active part of its 11-year cycle, we're expecting a rise in solar flares, sunspots, and coronal mass ejections. While this might create spectacular auroras, it also poses significant risks for our tech-dependent world. The timing is especially noteworthy as it coincides with the Artemis mission, humanity's return to the moon after more than 50 years. What will the solar maximum bring in the months ahead? What unusual activity in this solar cycle has NASA on alert? And most crucially, will this period of solar turbulence put the lives of Artemis astronauts at risk as they embark on their journey to the moon? The sun, while the source of life on Earth, holds the power to disrupt and endanger much of what we depend on in today's modern world. From our vantage point, the sun might appear the same every day, rising in the morning and setting at night, a cycle that has been constant throughout human history. However, up close, the sun is anything but static. It's a constantly shifting ball of plasma covered in sunspots, flares, and massive structures like prominences and filaments, some of which are larger than Earth itself. In essence, the sun is a massive, ever-changing sphere of hot gas. This change, however, isn't random. It follows a regular pattern. Roughly every 11 years, the sun undergoes cycles of increased and decreased activity, known as the solar cycle or Schwabe cycle. We're currently observing the 25th solar cycle since scientists began systematically recording solar activity in 1755. But how did scientists first discover the sun's cyclical activity? The answer lies in the observation of sunspots. Sunspots are temporary dark areas on the sun's surface, appearing darker because they are cooler than the surrounding regions. The temperature at the center of a sunspot ranges between 3,000 and 4,500 Kelvin, compared to the sun's surface temperature of about 5,800 Kelvin. These sunspots are the result of intense magnetic activity, and some can be as large as Earth. When astronomers began to consistently track sunspots, they noticed a striking pattern. The number of sunspots would rise and fall over a roughly 11-year cycle, providing a clear indication of the sun's varying levels of activity. They also observed changes in the size, coverage, and location of sunspots on the sun. A solar cycle typically begins with just a few sunspots, a phase known as the solar minimum. As more sunspots appear, the cycle reaches its peak, called the solar maximum. After this peak, the number of sunspots gradually decreases, signaling the approach of the next solar minimum in the end of the cycle. One intriguing pattern astronomers noticed is the movement of sunspots. At the start of a solar cycle, sunspots emerge at mid-latitudes on the sun. As the cycle progresses, they gradually shift toward the equator. When this movement is plotted on a graph, it forms a shape resembling a butterfly aptly named the Butterfly Diagram. This diagram visually captures the rhythmic nature of the solar cycle. For many years, astronomers tracked solar activity primarily through sunspots. However, with advancements in technology, they uncovered two more key aspects that changed during the solar cycle. The first is the sun's magnetic field. The sun acts as a giant magnet with a north and south pole. Its magnetism drives much of its dynamic behavior. Scientists discovered that during each solar cycle, the sun's magnetic field undergoes a complete reversal of polarity. This means that the magnetic north becomes the south and the south becomes the north. This magnetic pole reversal happens around the time of the solar maximum, marking both the peak of the cycle and its transition toward the solar minimum. Importantly, it signifies the midpoint of the solar cycle. This phenomenon remains one of the most intriguing unsolved problems in solar physics. Why does the sun's magnetic field reverse polarity during each solar cycle? While the exact cause of this reversal remains a mystery, one feature of the sun might play a crucial role, its non-uniform rotation. The sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. Instead, it spins at different speeds depending on latitude. At the poles, the sun rotates more slowly than it does at the equator a process known as differential rotation. It's believed that this rapid differential rotation causes the sun's plasma to drag magnetic field lines, twisting and tangling them as they move toward the surface. 
which eventually leads to the formation of sunspots. These sunspots, along with other instabilities, weaken the magnetic field lines, reducing their strength to nearly zero. This creates the opportunity for the magnetic field to reorganize and reemerge at the poles, but with the opposite polarity. While this magnetic pole reversal is a regular and predictable event, it continues to baffle scientists as one of the great unsolved mysteries in solar physics. Another aspect of the solar cycle is the variation in the sun's overall activity, including solar wind, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. These phenomena reach their highest levels during solar maximum and their lowest during solar minimum. As a result, modern monitoring of the solar cycle involves not just counting sunspots, but also tracking solar activity in the magnetic polarity reversals. But do all solar cycles last the same amount of time or exhibit the same intensity? Not quite. Some solar cycles have been as short as nine years, while others have stretched up to 14 years, making each cycle slightly unpredictable. This variability has been observed since we first started studying the sun closely. This means that the 11-year period is an average of how long it typically takes the sun to complete its cycle of activity. However, each solar cycle is unique in its intensity, which is measured by the total number of sunspots observed. Throughout history, there have been unusual periods of solar activity that left scientists puzzled. One such period was the Maunder Minimum from 1645 to 1715, during which very few sunspots were observed, around 50 sunspots total, compared to the typical 40,000 to 50,000. This time of significantly reduced solar activity coincided with the Little Ice Age, a period when the North Atlantic region experienced colder than normal temperatures. Similarly, the Dalton Minimum, which occurred between 1790 and 1830, saw fewer sunspots and was linked to lower global temperatures, occurring during solar cycles four through seven. On the other hand, the modern maximum from 1933 to 1957 saw more sunspots and was linked to higher global temperatures. 2008 experienced higher than usual solar activity, particularly starting around solar cycle 19. Now, as we are in solar cycle 25, scientists are surprised by its behavior. Based on previous cycles, it was predicted that this cycle would be relatively mild. However, the sun's activity has been much more intense than expected, reminding us once again of the sun's dynamic and unpredictable nature. This current solar cycle is proving to be more powerful than anticipated, and it is reaching its peak earlier than forecasted. When solar cycle 25 began in December 2019, predictions indicated a peak around July 2025 with about 115 sunspots. However, the sun's heightened activity has defied these expectations. However, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center has recently updated its forecast, now expecting the solar peak to occur between January and October 2024, with an estimated 137 to 173 sunspots. This revised prediction highlights the dynamic nature of solar activity and its inherent unpredictability. Understanding the implications of this increased intensity and early peak involves examining X-class solar flares. Solar flares are powerful bursts of electromagnetic radiation from the sun's atmosphere, triggered by the reconnection of strong magnetic fields. The sun's complex magnetic field, which extends throughout its interior, can become twisted and distorted. When these magnetic fields stretch to the surface and reconnect, they release tremendous amounts of energy, resulting in a solar flare. Solar flares are categorized by their strength. Class B is the weakest, followed by Class C, M, and the most intense, Class X. Class C flares are generally too weak to have significant effects on Earth. However, Class M flares can cause short-term radio blackouts at the poles and minor radiation storms, posing potential risks to astronauts. Each class is further divided on a scale from one to nine based on intensity. The Carrington event of 1859 was associated with an X-class flare, which led to one of the most intense geomagnetic storms ever recorded. Since the current solar cycle began, the first X-class solar flare occurred on July 3, 2021, resulting in a substantial radio blackout. This demonstrates the significant impact such flares can have, emphasizing the importance of monitoring solar activity closely. 
This series of X-Class flares began with the event on July 3rd, 2021, and has continued with notable incidents. In early 2022, a powerful flare from the sun caused geomagnetic storms that resulted in the loss of 40 newly launched Starlink satellites. On December 15, 2023, an X 2.8 flare disrupted radio communications on Earth for two hours. Later on New Year's Eve, the sun unleashed an X 5 flare, adding to the series of intense solar events. On February 21st, 2024, Two X-class solar flares erupted just seven hours apart, astonishing astronomers. Within 24 hours of these occurrences, another powerful X-class flare, classified as X6.3, was released, marking the most intense flare from the sun in over five years.